In this video, I'll show you how to use SPSS to do some basic multiple regression analysis. And the first thing to do, of course, is to import your data. Now, if your data is already in a SPSS data file, a .sav file. You can import that directly. Just go to the uh, open file icon here uh, and search for your file, .sav file, and open it. Alternatively, you can import from some other type of data file, such as Excel or Stata. I'm going to do that here. I'm going to import from a, an Excel file. So I'm going to go to File, Import Data, and there's the various options. I'm going, it's an Excel file. Find the file that you want. Here I've got it already, but you may have to search around here, of course, uh, in the file system. So click that and click Open. That will open the Excel file and locate the data that's in there. Now you have to be careful here, if you've got um, variable names in the first row of your Excel file, which you often have, make sure this option is clicked, which it is by default, and then it will pick those up. And then if you have a nice clean data file with just the data in, nothing else, no additional calculations or charts, it should find that data very quickly and you can always check that everything is included. So let's open it up. Let's uh, import it rather. And there we are. So I've imported my data. Now it's got the variable names. If you want, you can add some data labels here. I won't bother in this case, but you can of course add data labels, which will be used on the uh, axes of your graphs, more descriptive labels. So just checking that all my data is in there. There should be 78 observations, yes. Now, here revenue is the dependent variable, price and advert are the independent variables, the explanatory variables. So I'm going to run a regression of revenue against price and advert. So I can do all of this now in the output window. Of course your results will appear. The first thing I need to do is to go to the Analyze menu and choose Regression and Linear. Uh, which is where you set up your model. So the dependent variable here is Revenue and the independent variables are Price and Adverts. So if I select both of those and then put them in to here, you can of course uh, uh, drag across as well, drop and uh, drag and drop into here as well as clicking these arrows. Now, there's various options that I want here to get the information I need. If we first go to Statistics, I want the Durbin Watt Statistic as a test of autocorrelation. I want the Case-Wise Diagnostic as a check for outliers. I'm looking for any um, observations that have standard deviations uh, of the residuals, the standardized residuals greater than two standard deviations. I'll change that to two. I'm not too bothered about the confidence intervals here or anything else. Click continue. Now if we go to plots, I want the histogram of the standardized residuals to check for normality and the normal probability check. Under save, I want to make sure that I save the predicted values, the uh, actual ones and standardized and the unstandardized residuals the actual residuals. You can save the standardized one if you want, but the unstandardized is fine. Nothing else he needed. Continue. Under options, there's nothing there unless in the rare occurrence that you definitely don't want a constant in your equation, you normally should. If, if you are convinced that there shouldn't be, that the constant is zero, then you can exclude it by unclicking that. But normally, you need that, so we just leave that as it is. Okay, so we now have all the options set. Let's click OK to get the results. And here now is the standard printout. First of all, it tells you the uh, independent variables and the dependent variable, so that you know the model. You can then get the goodness of fit measures, the R-squared, the adjusted R-squared, the standard error of the estimate, and also here's the Durbin-Watson statistic. 
The analysis of variance is, of course, the F test of uh, testing whether all the coefficient values are jointly equal to zero, uh, and, or effectively, in other words, testing whether the R squared is significantly different from zero, testing the overall model. Then come your coefficient estimates with the T stat and the significance, or P value as it's also known. A list here of any out, but potential out, well, outliers based on the standardized residual being greater than 2 in absolute value. Then you have some residual statistics here. Then we have the norm of probability plot of the standardized residuals. And here we can also check for outliers by looking for ones that are great, more than two standard deviations away from the mean. And here we can see those two that we've already identified up here. And then you have the normal probability plot, which is a, you can see from this to what extent it seems, the residuals seem to be normally distributed, which is what they should be, certainly what you want. A test of that, another test is this, if these points here are fairly close to this horizontal, this the diagonal line, then they're reasonably normally distributed. So. Looking at that here, that's not too bad. Uh, they could perhaps be better, but they are reasonably normally distributed. For forecasting purposes, that's not absolutely essential. Now, of course, before we can start looking at the T stats, the F stat, the R squared, and so on, you have to be satisfied that the residuals, which are estimates of the error uh, of the disturbance term in the equation, are purely random. So we're looking to check that they're not correlated with each other, autocorrelated, that they're not heteroscedastic, that they don't have a non-constant variance around the mean of zero. We're also checking uh, we're also checking for things like functional form is appropriate and for multicollinearity. So let's first of all look at the uh, autocorrelation. Now we've got the Derby Watson statistic, but what I'll also do first of all here is plot the residuals. I'm going to go to graphs, legacy dialogues line. I just want a simple line, simple line chart of the actual values. And of course I want the residuals here. So add a title, this is the residuals. Click OK. And here is my residual plot now. You're looking to see if these feel fairly random or if there's a definite pattern. It looks reasonably random here. There's maybe a bit of up and down going on, but it's not a distinct sort of cycle. So they look reasonable. But of course, uh, a better test is the Durbin Watt statistic. As far as heteroscedasticity goes, um, there's no real evidence of that. There's no tendency for these residuals to the variance of the residuals around zero to get wider and wider. They seem to be within bands of say 15 to minus 15. So that looks okay. So what correlation looks okay? Or heteroscedasticity or homoscedasticity is what we want. Looks okay. And let's look at the Durbin Watson statistic up here. Now uh, it's 2.037, which of course is is good. Normally, you're looking uh, if there's no autocorrelation, you should be getting a Dermot statistic of around two. Uh, a rule of a simple rule of thumb is if the Dermot statistic is less than 1.5, you maybe got positive autocorrelation. If it's greater than 2.5, negative. So this is looking okay. The formal test, of course, requires that you compare this test statistic with the critical value. So looking at the uh, a set of uh, tables of critical values. Here we're going to look at, assume a 5% significance level and of course the other thing you need to look at is the um, number of observations which in our case was, if we look back, 36 Uh, sorry, 78 observations in this case. And also you need to know the number of uh, explanatory variables, which of course was 2, price and advert. So going back 
here to this uh, set of critical values. So we're using the 5% and we'll also use the lower limit QL. So two expansion variables, that's what you look along here, two and n being the number of observations, 78. So if we look, two QLs, we're looking down this column here. Now let's go to 70, 80 is the nearest one here. So we're saying the critical value is 1.611. Now clearly the Devon Watts district is great, it's higher than that. Uh, it's nearly, it's two point something. As we can see here, if we just go back to it again. So that's fine, there's no evidence here of, of autocorrelation. So that's okay. Now heteroscedasticity, as I said, looks okay from the residual plot. Another way of checking that graphically is to plot the residuals against the predicted values. So let's do that. So a nice scatter graph this time, simple scatter of the residuals against the predicted values. If that appears to be random scatter, which it is, there's no particular pattern, then that's indicative of no heteroscedasticity. Now the other thing to check is um, functional form. Uh, the fact that the autocor there's no autocorrelation, no heteroscedasticity suggests that the functional form is okay. Another way to check that graphically is to plot the residuals against each of the uh, predictor, the explanatory variables and uh, see if there's any distinct pattern. Um, so let's do that. So let me draw a graph. This time of the residuals against, not the predictive values, but the predictive variables starting with price. Again, that looks pretty random. There's no suggestion there, I think, of any pattern. And then let's do it against the other one, advertising. scattering. So there's no suggestion here that we need to change the functional form from a, a, a straightforward linear specification. Remember of course that when we talk about multiple linear regression it means linear in the parameters. It, you can you can use multiple regression analysis with variables which are not linear. They could be squared, cubed, logs and so on. But here we've uh, got a, we've got linear parameters, linear variables and, and that seems to be okay. One final thing to check here is for possible multicollinearity, possible high correlation between the independent variables, which of course, although it's not necessarily a problem for forecasting purposes, will make the individual coefficients perhaps um, not very precise. So if we look back at the coefficients. In fact, there doesn't appear to be an issue here. They're both um, statistically significant. They both have t stats well above 2 in absolute value, and p values which are essentially 0. Uh, so that doesn't look to be a problem, but one way to check that, of course, simply to find the correlation coefficient between each pair of independent variables. Now there's only one pair here, price and advert, so that's all we need. So we can do that under the Analyze menu, under Correlate and bivariate that will calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient and also test if it's significantly different from zero. So let me include price and advert, just the explanatory variables you're looking at here of course. So there's the correlation. 
it's 0.413 that is significantly different from zero but as you can see it's fairly low it's below a half really we'd be looking for something 0.8 or above to possibly have a problem and that explains probably why we're getting uh, no problem with getting significant coefficients on both price and advert in our results up here there's just one other thing to check and that's to uh, have a look for any problems with potential outliers now if we look at the case wise diagnostics you'll see it has identified a couple of potential outliers here case number three case number 20 where the standard uh, dies residual uh, is more than two standard deviations uh, but only just uh, again obviously you can see these in the diagram the histogram here the standardized residuals there's a couple here but they're only just outside so i don't think that that would be a major issue here one solution of course is to omit these two cases from the uh, data set and we uh, re-estimate the, the the equation um, or you can um, and, and then you can present both sets of results, one with outliers, one uh, without them. Although I suspect in this case there won't be much of a difference. So this model does seem to uh, be okay in terms of passing the diagnostic test. The residuals, the errors are not autocorrelated. They're not heteroscedistic. Um, they, uh, the functional form seems to be okay. Um, there's no particular problem with the functional form it seems so that enables them to look at the t stats and the r squared and so on as i say here the t stats are all fine the all the both coefficients here and the constant but it's the coefficients we're particularly interested in on the variables are both significantly different from zero the r squared is of course significant uh, uh, the, in other words, both the coefficients are not jointly equally equal to zero. The S that's fine, and we've got a reasonable R squared of 0.873. So it, it could may be possible to improve the model by adding additional uh, variable explanatory variables. But as it stands, this is quite reasonable. So that shows you how to carry out this basic multiple regression analysis.